Hello there, you'll want to grab your packet and let's get started with 14.3. This is a fun one. We're going to use some Venn diagrams to illustrate some probability problems. So uh, we're going to be talking about and, or, and complements with Venn diagrams. And our objective here is going to be to use Venn diagrams to organize data. So Venn diagrams can be very useful sometimes. Um, Venn diagrams are just basically graphical organizers. And I think you guys know what Venn diagrams are. They look like this. Okay, so you can either have two together or three together or even four together. So remember this right here is where your two sets would overlap. And we could even add, like I said, a third one here. So now our our total overlap would be right in in there. That would be the, the section that covers all three. All right. So we're just going to dive into some new vocabulary words here. The first one is a union. And a union is going to involve this symbol. So this is the symbol. It makes a lot of sense. It looks like a U. And it really means or. Okay, so I'm going to draw a couple pictures here for each of these. So I'm going to draw a rectangle with a Venn diagram inside of it. And I'm going to call this guy A and this guy B. And I'm even going to put some numbers in here. We're going to do 4, 2, and 3. Okay, so now if I asked you for a union B, that really means A or B. So think about what that might mean. Okay, A or B would mean anything that's in A or anything that's in B or anything that's in both of them. So it's 4 plus 2 plus 3, which would be 9 different things. Okay. So you want to count everything in A and in B and in both and in that, that intersection there. Okay. So that's going to lead us to the intersection. The intersection is going to look like this. That's the symbol you use. It corresponds with the word and, and it is, in other words, your intersection. So we're going to draw kind of that same picture again. So A and B, and we did what? Four, two, and three. Okay, so the intersection is just that guy here. So it's just the two. So A intersect B is just the overlap. So it's just the two. I could write it up here, I guess. And that one's nine. Okay, complement. The complement is either this or this and this would be not a and not b so we'll draw our diagram one more time so four two three and this time i'm going to add a number outside of here a five and remember this is a and this is b Okay, so if I said complement of A, that means everything that's not in A. So not in A at all. So this circle is all stuff that's within A. Four and two are both within A. So we do not want to count either one of those. So not A would just be three plus five, which is eight. Okay, similarly, if we did not B, that would be 
things that are not within here. So we would count four and we would count five, which is nine. All right, so let's practice with an actual problem here. So it says, out of 18 people in the glee club, 11 have dogs and seven have cats. So this is our glee club uh, Venn diagram. Um, four people have both cats and dogs. Draw a Venn diagram to organize the information. Okay, so we got to think a little bit here. So we are going to make a nice big circle and another nice big circle. And we're going to call this guy dogs and cats. And I'm just going to start by reading the information. It says out of the 18 total people, 11 have dogs and seven have cats. But now here's where we have to think a little bit. It says that four people have both dogs and cats. Okay, well, as it sits, we already have our 18 people accounted for. 11 plus 7 is 18. So that's not going to work. So what we actually need to do is take 4 from 11, which is 7, and take 4 from 7, which is 3. And now we have our four people that have both. But now, now what? 7 plus 4 plus 3 is not 18. 7 plus 4 plus 3 is only 14. So what happened to the other 4? Oh, there are 4 more people that don't have a dog or a cat. So pause a second and make sure that you're, you're understanding um, where that all comes from. We need 18 people all together. We have that overlap of 4, okay? And then we have our, our seven that just have a dog, then and our three that just have a cat. Then we have four that don't have any, any pets whatsoever. So um, if we answer the questions, how many of the, the club members only have cats? Only cats is three, three members. Um, how many have a cat or a dog? Okay, remember that word or. Okay, so that would look like this. Cat or means the union, cat or dog. So that would be anything, I'm gonna grab a, yellow here, that would be anything inside of there. So it would be seven plus four plus three, which is 14, 14 people um, have either a cat or a dog, um, or maybe they have both. Um, how many have neither a cat nor a dog? That's this, this people. Those four people out there have neither. Okay. And then last question, what would the probability of uh, picking someone with a dog? Um, so out of our total 18 people, how many of them have a dog? Well, it said right in the problem, 11 have dogs. We really don't even need the Venn diagram for that. 11 of them have a dog. All right, and then we're going to try just one more problem here, uh, and then we will not, we'll not do that bottom part. So this one says there are 40 students in the room in a classroom, 14 are taking English composition, and 29 are taking chemistry. Five students are taking both. Use a Venn diagram. Okay. So we're going to call this English composition, and we're going to call this chem. And we're going to start by doing what we did before. So 14 are taking English composition and 29 are taking chem and five are taking both. But wait a minute, uh, we counted those people too many times. So we need to take five away from 14, which leaves us with nine, five away from 29, which leaves us with 24. And now we needed 40 students total. So we have 24 and nine is 33 and 33 and 5 is 38. So we have two people that aren't taking either one of those. So now if we go to answer the questions, how many are taking neither class? Two. We just answered that. How many are in either class? Either one or the other uh, or both? Well, that's, that's 38 of them. If two are not taking either, then 38 are because we needed 40 altogether. Um, what would the probability be of picking someone who is only taking chemistry? Only chemistry is the 24. So 24 out of 40. 
And let's reduce that. Let's see, we can divide those each by eight. So three fifths. Uh, oh, odds. What are the odds of taking talking to someone who is only in English composition? So let's do probability first. So probability of English composition, and it would be only English, com English composition. So nine out of 40. Okay, but remember, we need to convert that to odds. So 9 to 40 minus 9, 40 minus 9 is 31. So 9 to 31 would be the answer there. Um, e, what would be the probability of picking someone who is in both chemistry and English? So remember, the both is this middle one, and that came right from the problem. So 5 out of 40, which that one can be reduced. Cut them, cut them both by 5, so 1 eighth. And then the last one, uh, what are the odds of talking to someone who is not in either class? Well, remember we had two out of the 40 or one out of 20. That's our probability of not being in either, but we need to convert that to odds. So one to 19. Okay, so if you wanna do the check for understanding, uh, go ahead and, and do that one. If not, go ahead and start the practice for 14.3.